I don't know if we could talking about, like, was Justice League 2 going to happen? Is Justice League 3 going to happen? Should we restore the Snyderverse? And I think everyone knows where we already stand on that point. People are putting out their ending explains and spoiler review videos, and, I, and I'm sure there's some people who are like, why the hell are you talking about this, Greg? <laughs> but I, I, I do got to say, like, it, it's... It's really this story, for some reason, of any of the stories that come out this week in particular, Green Lantern was supposed to be in the original <laughs> ending, a whole bunch of jazz. It's this one that is my favorite. Happy Zack Snyder's Justice League Day, people. Uh, whoever is lucky enough to access it or whoever has been able to see it, um, I hope you did. We love it. By the way, the full-length watch-along, where you sync up, watch along with us, that'll be available on our Patreon tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we just gotta work on uh, assembling it. The reaction highlights for it will be up, I don't know, hopefully in a week or two. It's gonna be a long edit, <laughs> that's for sure. But the watch-along will be at our Patreon. And also, we'll be doing a spoiler talk for it, probably a live stream, uh, this coming Saturday to give people time to watch it and get as many people on that stream as possible so we can be overwhelmed and get anxiety during it. <laughs> Answer all your burning <laughs> questions about the cut. So, with today, you know, I felt like I wanted to talk about something Snyder Cut related. I came across this story that just broke my heart. Uh, it touched my heart. It's beautiful. Broke my heart and in, 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 in like that sad side, but then in the like, oh my god, that is so touching <laughs> to me. This is moved so, by it. Yeah, I'm very much moved by it. So there's gonna be some slight spoilers here uh, for the movie. I, like I don't think they're big spoilers in terms of plot. However, if you haven't seen the movie, or if you don't, if you don't care, you can say. But if you haven't seen the movie, I think it's better for this to be experienced. So while it's not like a big plot point that is. That, that is, uh, you know, like significant, like, oh my God. I still think it works better if you, you know, like, just don't see the scene coming, <laughs> you know? So basically, this actress named C. Amanda Maud, Chinese American actor who lives in London. And, um, man, this, oh boy, this, this, this one really does get to me. <laughs> so she put out this tweet yesterday saying, Snyder Cut, I was cut from the Whedon version. Can someone please let me know if I'm in this version? Trying to figure out how to view it, but please let me know if I made this cut on the single mom waitress in Cyborg's backstory. Now, I put out this uh, Twitter, this tweet. I don't know why I'm like so fucking emotional over this shit. <laughs> so I put out this, it I put out this tweet uh, where like a couple days ago, basically about like there's a cyborg scene. It got us both really emotional, and I was pretty angry that it was cut. And it's actually like involving his whole backstory and plus her specific scene. <laughs> I really identify, sympathize with that. <laughs> Damn shit. Talk about the the heart. That's <laughs> yeah, it's heartbreaking. How dare they cut those scenes out of I the movie? No, like, like, damn, that actually angered me that those were not in the other cut. Man, that was talk about doing a disservice to a character. <sighs> oh, boy. I know the reaction's not available right now, but I'll just tell you what the scene is. Cyborg, he basically starts to really learn and embrace his powers more, and then within there, he basically sees this whole woman's life story through, like, all c c levels of hidden security cameras all over the world, <laughs> and watching her struggle as a single mom. And then, at the, man, that scene just replayed it in my head, it just gets me. And then, uh... At the eight, and then when he he follows her to the ATM where she, and and then he like loads her account with just so much freaking money, yeah. <laughs> like so much goddamn money, and then she's just so happy, and I, I, it's like it's such a heroic Robin Hood beautiful yeah. moment, and I'm like, damn, she didn't get to see that shit, and that's that was one of my favorite yeah. scenes in that whole four hour movie. It, it, it is one of my favorite scenes. And uh, it it like it just breaks my heart. Like that scene breaks my heart. And then to know like, oh man, she didn't get to experience that. And then just to see like it's got like 890 retweets, um, a shit ton of comments, and just like so many people just came in to just be like, hey, you're awesome. You're the best. You're one of the best parts of this movie. And, like she's this Asian American actress, and I don't know, especially with like 
the way the scene is, my parents were never divorced, but my mom was the breadwinner in the family. She was often like the only one working. She's Asian, so just something about that that I really felt connected to, (laughs) especially with like struggling with money growing up. And then to see her like follow up tweet where she said, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Thank you everyone for all the kind words and support. Thank you to everyone that made the Snyder Cut possible. And I'm like, see, this is why this, this like, I know we could talking about like, was Justice League 2 gonna happen? Is Justice League 3 gonna happen? Should we restore the Snyderverse? And I think everyone knows where we already stand on that point. People are putting out their ending explains and spoiler review videos, and, I, and I'm sure there's some people who are like, why the hell are you talking about this, Greg? <laughs> but I, I, I do gotta say, like, it, it's, it, it's really this story, for some reason, of any of the stories that come out this week in particular, Green Lantern was supposed to be in the original <laughs> ending, a whole bunch of jazz. It's this one that is my favorite so far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, because this represents the best of what, you know, this whole fan interaction with the big machine can offer you is like really people can be vindicated and see their work done justice to, you know, not to pull a pun there. But yeah, I mean, you know, between the charity work that this movie has helped drum up, the awareness for suicide prevention and whatnot, and then things like this that are so personal for someone to be validated this way and to be embraced by a ton of strangers. You know, and to, uh, I bet to be given all that news in such a deluge has to be one of the most unique moments in anyone's life. And so, yeah, it's it's interesting to see. I mean, not, you know, to say that this woman's life is exactly like the character she played in the movie or anything. But, yeah, I mean, that is one of the things that really shows why that cut stands above the other one. It's a moment they didn't have to put in at all. I feel like other movies did obviously wouldn't have cared to include. And, yeah, it's things like that that exemplify. I think the best all around of what this experience has offered us, you know? With like Cyborg's backstory, in that scene too, it's just, it's such a power, like a big part of what upset me about all this being cut out, especially with Cyborg's backstory is, with Cyborg, he's got such a tragic turn of events from going from Victor Stone into Cyborg. And he just kind of hates himself and is ashamed. And it's this moment here where he starts to realize the good he can actually do. Mm -hmm. And like the possibilities. She was gypped. Ray Fisher certainly <laughs> was like ch- to command. They abused. they act so much beautiful work that yeah. that man did. I loved everything they did with Cyborg here in the Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm-hmm. But this to me, it's like you always hear about whatever fandom is popular at the time. Is there's a, some article or something about how they're the most toxic fandom? They're too much. If it's if it's freaking Star Wars that's popular at the time, it's Star Wars is the most toxic fandom. It was yeah. BTS K-pop group. <laughs> BTS is the most <laughs> toxic <laughs> fandom. Yeah. You know, and then it's Ralph Boner, Marvel, <laughs> toxic fan. And then uh, Snyder uh, cut is the same the same deal with uh, the Snyder fans. But to me, like when you go through like the quote tweets here and and all the love and praise for such an emotionally powerful scene and a scene that is not like she's not a superhero she's not she's just an Asian mom, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's still so powerful, Absolutely. that whole sequence. I wanted to make sure that, even if you haven't heard the story, that, you know, share the, share the story around, because this is this is one of the best things to come out of this whole movement, in my opinion. I hope Zack Snyder becomes aware of this, too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Keep Check us out on uh, Patreon for the full length. Subscribe to YouTube and <laughs> click that notification bell. Hit that like button. We'll do a spoiler review this weekend, too. See you guys.